tomorrow we're scheduled to have some hearings before the Financial Services Committee. We're to uh, talk about the TARP funds, the additional $350 billion now being requested uh, from the uh, Congress. Uh, at the very last minute, uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, Bernanke, has canceled, as well as Sheila Baird, who's the chairman, chairwoman of the FDIC. She will not show up either. But here I find out that they have a much more important meeting. They are going to Basel, Switzerland, to uh, attend a meeting at the Bank of International Settlement with other international bankers. But here it is, an emergency meeting for them to run off to Europe and talk about monetary policy and who knows what. One thing for sure is the people will never hear. And uh, matter of fact, the people in the Congress won't hear either. But we do know that at the very last minute, Congress meant nothing for them to meet their commitment. But this isn't the first time. They were both scheduled to meet before the Financial Services Committee last Wednesday, and they canceled at the very last minute. But we will have the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve Board come, and the Assistant to uh, Baird, uh, he will come also uh, tomorrow, so there will be some type of hearings. The discussion is going to be uh, the $350 billion now about to come from the Congress. And there's a little bit of a contest going on right now. You know, originally the, the $700 billion was given uh, to the Treasury with hardly any strings attacked, and Treasury has free reign. And there's been complaints about that, that, rightfully so. But my contention isn't so much the management of the funds. My contention is, why are we giving these funds away at all? But now there's a contest going on between the uh, uh, Congress, uh, led by uh, the chairman of the Financial Services, uh, Barney Frank, uh, versus what uh, Obama might be wanting to do, and what the Federal Reserve wants to do, and what Treasury wants to do. And with the uh, administrations changing now, there's a lot of contest on who gets to spend the money. So we will see what will happen. One thing for sure is the American taxpayer is going to come up short. But you know, we shouldn't really be surprised about what is happening here because just last week, many of you have heard about uh, the bill they brought up all of a sudden on, uh, on Gaza. That bill came up without any announcement. I'm on Foreign Affairs Committee. It was never brought up before the committee. The night before I went home, which was Thursday night, I had not heard that this bill would be brought up. At the very last minute, late at the night, it was decided it would be brought up as a suspension bill, and also that the opening time for Congress would not be 10 o'clock, but 9 o'clock. Now you say, well, maybe this is just for convenience. Well, the convenience is they didn't want anybody like myself to get there on time and demand the 20 minutes in opposition because they know I would have objected to having both sides agree to this and rushing it through without any real discussion. Fortunately, uh, I heard of it the very last minute, and by racing to the House floor, I was able to manage two minutes of the time. But uh, the, the, the whole resolution was railroaded through, and it was designed for one purpose, and that was to have a one-sided uh, support for Israel over the Palestinians. And of course, my position has been stated many times. I just don't think we should be in that fight. We should treat both sides equally. And treating both sides equally would mean denying funds to both sides and dealing more with the importance uh, of our, our financial situation and dealing with our national security, and it would serve our interest to stay out. So stay out of that business. So whether it's dealing with Gaza or dealing with this, uh, these funds coming out of Congress, it's much better for the taxpayer if we just lie low, back off, quit funding all this money. That's how we got into this trouble, and we're not going to get out of it. But to me, it is rather sad that uh, Bernanke can, can get away with pretending he's going to come and then not showing and running off to Europe, and who knows what they're planning. That, to me, is the important issue. And I will do my darndest to try to find out what really went on at these meetings that they're holding over uh, in Switzerland right now with all the central bankers.